What's up friends, this is Money, and welcome to a skill edition video right here where I tell you about every in-battle decision that was made to help you perhaps improve your own gameplay, timing abilities better, having more map awareness and learning how to counter things and generally just become a better player. And the second match shown here is one where you can even learn something if you're already one of the best. Now, I choose this spot because from here with the 600 meter weapon range, I have perfect map control over the bridge and the pipe. However, uh, I could not know that one of the enemy Max Meta Orokochis will decide to basically get himself killed and take me with him. Now, no matter what I do in this situation, death is the result because that Orokochi just brings too much power to kill him this quickly. And I like that this happened here in this video because it shows that no matter how good you are in this game or no matter what you... you didn't do something wrong when this happened. Orokochi wants to kill you? He's going to. But I know his abilities on cooldown, so I'm not wasting any further time jumping in immediately without giving him the choice or chance to recover another ability charge, and boom. So with a robot that I typically use to dominate the entire team for the entire rest of the match, or at least until the mutants spawn in in big numbers, he only took me out and maybe one more guy, definitely not worth it. You could have done so much better with this, but I guess he recognized my name and he had a mission. Now, I see him coming in here again, but I decided to kill the Dagon first. Important kills have to be taken no matter what. And now that his ability is on cooldown, which I also know, I do the important damage down to last stand. Of course, once again, I die because the invader doesn't function anymore when you can't heal his HP back uh, with rust effect. But now again, I know his ability is on cooldown, so I just jump on him and pop him real quick. So uh, there he goes, uh, two of his probably most powerful, most important robot for this match. And I would argue that these things did not nearly as much as they should have done for his team. But hey, maybe he's got five Ohokochis and he doesn't care, right? I mean, there are players like this. So generally what's important is don't make things personal because you recognize a name or the same person again. Stay professional. Now I see him coming in here again. Of course I time my ability so that once he lands exactly as his Orpheon shield drops, I'm jumping in. Uh, I could have tried to stay in the yellow shield, but the yellow shield didn't have so much durability. I drop him, finish him off, and get that um, teleport back as well. Now, while I'm looking around everywhere, getting my map awareness together, I know that there's an Orokochi in our base, um, and uh, it would be healthy to jump on him, uh, but I decided that my team should be able to handle it, and I instead jumped down here. I saw the enemy scorpion just teleported away. I didn't know it was a scorpion, by the way. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm just going to wait here. I wait here and I just take him out. What I didn't know is that I'm in the meantime getting attacked from behind by uh, the Dagon and that I take a full salvo of a Reaper Crisis setup in my back. Now unfortunately we died so jumping into the next one and activating Execute immediately here against the Orokochi, uh, a kill that is important to be made. Um, and uh, yeah, that uh, did not allow him to get another ability charge. Then I was also trying to apply some damage to the uh, Orpheon, but now I strategically withdraw because I understand the guy is about to get his next flight and there's no reason to follow him any further. I have no shield break, I have no a way of attacking him in the air, but what I can do is time my advance and attack so that once he lands, I follow him out here. Now, Ultimate Adventures bypass 100% of resistance, which means that I can execute him even during his last stand if I just shoot a tiny little bit longer. And now I notice another Orokochi coming in. My Avengers are almost on reloading, so I decide to withdraw. But you see I have a lot of corrosion on me and in order to get rid of that you have to have phase shift. So I'm using it right here even though there's no tactical reason to use it. It's really just to stay in the game and now it's on a long cooldown. But it's okay because we're with our team. This is something you should always consider, especially in Team Deathmatch, um, that uh, they make things more easily for you or possible if you stick with them. You see for example this Orokochi, we're dropping him so hard and then pop! goes the execute at 30 or 20 percent HP not allowing him to get any more ability cooldowns out or whatever just making sure that guy is gone now again we can keep playing around even against attacking Orpheons with the stealth ability with the phase shift and cycle these abilities smart in a way that we basically get a job done kill important targets on the map and still come out without any real damage taken for example activating the battleship now uh, because we're attacked by two players one of them heavy firepower from a Dagon but I get to rid of the Dagon execute him and um, that shield was there for me uh, if I needed it now unfortunately no firepower actually came in at that time anymore but I didn't know that so 
better have it and not you, you need it, right? So now, maybe not the smartest idea, coming into the enemy base, doing exactly the opposite of what I've just told you, not using my team uh, to cover me and help me out. But I decided that I can probably do it with this really powerful Orpheon, uh, sorry, um, Lynx here. Um, and I face shifted out of the um, out of the corrosion again from the Ares. Now we're attacking a Newton Titan, a very important target, and hiding behind the wall from the enemies coming from the other side, uh, because they are trying to shoot me, all of them. Um, finishing off the Orpheon first, which I already still remembered that I almost got him before, and I was just waiting for him to land. Then again, getting hit by all things at the same time, getting lifted and EMP'd. Just hammering the face shift button to get out of that and then replacing the face shift with the stealth ability. After that, I'm replacing the stealth ability with the battleship shield to block once more a full salvo of the Newton. To drop in 10 more percent for the execute would be the goal here, but I made a mistake. I moved out with my ability coming active, but I uh, underestimated that all three other guys right there had nothing else to do but to wait for me to leave cover for just a split second. So I got killed immediately and basically died with a full stealth ability active. That hurt me a lot because that stealth ability would have easily allowed me to drop that entire Newton Titan there, refilling my health with a Kestrel drone and basically kept on rocking for probably a long time. But yeah, um, one second of exposure was too much in this case. Jumping in here very offensively, again, something you should not be doing. Typically, I can do this very well with this Rook. What I didn't see or, uh, well, take into account is that the Ares has Damper and Tamer on it. That means there is no healing for me. And of course, there's already two freaking Newtons, so I'm lifted up in the air. No control over my robot the entire playtime. I'm still able to jump on that before I land, trigger my flight and get that uh, Newton out of the way. But you see, I'm dying and my uh, gray HP is so high up. I could be restoring so much health by popping shields, but the Ares constantly applies 30 um, um, rust effects to me, so I'm no longer able to heal anything. And that's why even this Rook got killed. Totally underestimated that on my part. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to account a lot more for these stupid weapons broke, breaking our game in the future more and more to the point where healing is no longer an option for you to um, to consider. Here I'm coming out of this attacking this uh, Orpheon. Um, used phase shift to get rid of his first stacks of uh, corrosion that I'm staying underneath him so that he can no longer shoot me um, waiting out his ability uh, and as he lands I want to drop him but of course he lands very well on that roof I'm dropping the off uh, the Typhon there and the Orpheon at the same time before I get killed so I didn't make a big play here yeah it's not like I got the entire enemy team whooped but I got two important uh, kills that with a Skyros is not necessarily the type of thing you would expect. But I'm just not the guy who sits back in the base and waits for the enemy to come over to our side. That's just not who I am. However, of course, the enemy was extremely comfortable with that exact playstyle and uh, three on one me every single time I did more than absolutely nothing in the game. That's team deathmatch for you. Anyways, um, we did 6 million damage, 16 kills. Uh, we pretty hard carried this match, but it was not enough for a win. The enemy just had too many of those Orochis, too many of those Newtons, and too much of this rust effect weapons. Now, this gameplay you're seeing, you've already seen it before, but I didn't use this excellent gameplay here yet for a skill episode where I give you an in-depth uh, strategy analysis about every action done by me. Um, and this could be interesting. I notice I'm a prime target for the Hurricane in the distance. I also saw two Orochis coming in and I'm face shifting right through uh, his rust effect right here. I know his ability is on cooldown in two, one, now. And that's exactly the moment I engage him. My plan now is to drop him to below 50% so to scrap his free second uh, ability from the Clever Survivor or Death Survivor skill. I always confuse the two. Um, and uh, of course that works pretty well. I got him down. His ability is ticking a second time and that's the last time he's going to get an ability. I'm rushing in now with my ability running as he is on cooldown and I can just really easily deplete his health here. That all happened pretty well because I saw him running onto the beacon with his ability 
used. So I knew when he was on cooldown, I had the map awareness and I used it blatantly against him. And the same thing happens here. He rushes all the way up here to immediately re-attack me. Uh, and uh, that means his ability is once more on cooldown right now. I'm dropping him below 50%. Again, that, with, that activates his pilot skill for the second ability charge, which I then sit out from behind the beacon so I'm baited I baited his second ability basically activated it and then I just come in another time he should never have lost these two old coaches against this one here uh, but he was not patient that was the mistake he thought he can easily steamroll me with a second one and that's not going to happen and um, yeah so be patient now I see the dag in here I'm dropping him down to last stand and then face shift through his last stand, through his firepower, recharge my weapons and cooldown at the same time. That one phase shift solved four problems at the same time. Five even if you consider that it removes the corrosion uh, effect from your robot too, which he probably applied. So um, yeah, that was probably the best time phase shift I've ever had. And let's land down here, trying to recapture this beacon, but then I notice too much firepower. I have to get in cover. Two Offions are circling above my head. I am certainly the prime target of, of, this, t uh, of this enemy team here. That leaves the, op the question, why in the world is the rest of my team not steamrolling the rest of the enemy team and the other side when I single-handedly handle three guys here? But um, yeah, it's not. My team is still losing on the other side of the map, which is just mind-blowing. But um, that's just gonna happen sometimes. There's too much meta on one side and that will happen. Now the enemy is spawning in Newtons, that changes everything because as I've told you in this other video, um, that's the moment when skills no longer works. Newtons and the choke ability in particular simply disable skill because you no longer have control over your robot. So how can you apply skill to the game? Um, terrible idea terrible uh, idea to implement such a thing to the game and not allow immunities to kick in after being lifted not allow uh, anti-control to prevent um, the loss of control against it you know it's just it's just unbelievable anyways there is uh, one of those uh, newtons i can drop him away uh, and activate my ability i can only activate it once i touch the ground for a split second okay and that is what I was able to do here. Thankfully, this way I'm no longer taking damage and here comes another Ohokochi. But once again, the Ohokochi was very impatient and he came in here using up his ability in the process of just getting here faster. This is something you simply shouldn't be doing. And of course, I kill him, what does he do? He's jumping into the next Newton because they all must have that. And um, and here we go, that's the end. No, I, tip, I t touch this wall for a second that allows me to activate the ability. Um, uh, because you can't even do that while you're in the air. Uh, face shift doesn't bring you out of it, nothing helps you, and so all skills are now essentially disabled. And maybe you missed that, I had almost 800,000 HP on the Orokochi, more than I started with. Um, but Pixonic said no, or rather, Newton did. Newton said no, and when Newton said no, it's fine. Um, yeah, so that's also, by the way, why very often I just don't want to play this stupid game anymore. That Newton business with this choke, of whatever, why am I... Nah wasting my time. Anyways, I get lifted up here, expecting full Gotonans, but also using this choke for a massive forward jump. Getting ready here. At the end of the choke, I activate my ability, target something out of my weapons range so I don't jump on it, and make a ridiculous massive leap from this increased altitude here into the enemy home base beacon, basically putting pressure on them that was impossible to do otherwise. And now, although they're so meta-heavy and so heavily dominating this match, out of nowhere, suddenly they have this massive rook in front of them in range to actually hurt back the Newtons, capturing their home beacons and potentially, at least if the team is ready to communicate with you and use that momentum that I created here, uh, turn the match in the last minute. It would be possible, not with this team, unfortunately. I also was able to out, to bait the jump of the Luchador, to bait his reflector and then drop him quick, pretty fast, despite all the firepower coming in from two Newtons and a Reaper Crisis set up at the same time. Now, unfortunately, I am again lifted because again, no immunity, stupid game. And uh, I cannot even activate my flight to get higher and jump on this beacon to capture it. Um, and as soon as I leave it, another guy's back on this one. That was a lost cause, man. This map was just a lost cause. From the beginning till the end, my team was just pummeled to death um, by meta. But um, it still serves as a good example of, I think, skill moments or doing the right things in the right time that define the rest of this match. You're basically success 
um, allowing you to get much more out of your robot than you would normally if you uh, if you weren't paying attention to things like that or abusing other enemy cooldowns and weaknesses perhaps. 13 million damage, 11 kills, 4 beacons capped. That was a pretty good match, but we, we never saw a life here in this one. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching. We lost both matches, that is very unusual, but well, it's part of the game and um, it doesn't mean that you did a bad job, because in fact, you can do an incredible job and still lose the game because it's a team game with six versus six right uh, and uh, they can compensate for your performance but so can you for the performance of your teammates that is not as high and um, it's kind of the reason for these episodes anyways thank you for watching guys catch you in the next one manny signing off bye bye